so Griffin and I are just hanging out and he's waking up. Hi. What is that face? I just took a shower right now and I just did not want to do my hair. I haven't done my hair since I had the baby. So I just was like, I don't even want to blow dry it. I'm just going to let air dry. Sorry, it's like half wet and curly and just not. But I did want to film my labor and delivery experience video for y'all. I asked on Twitter if that was something y'all be interested in and it got a ton of favorites. So I was like, I will do that for y'all. And then I'm going to do a little Q&A segment at the end with Snapchat that I just put up a video or a little Snapchat vid saying, send me your questions via video and I will show you all my video. So I don't really know where to start. I'm, I'm basically just going to start from the beginning and go through the end. Um, I know everyone's experience is going to be different. So like, don't think my experience is going to be what y'all's is. I, you know, it's all, everyone's different. So hi love. He likes to swing. I'm going to put him in the swing really quick. My experience. So if y'all have been watching my weekly vlogs, sorry if you hear this TikTok in the background, it's that swing. It's like, I don't know what it is, but if y'all have been watching my weekly vlogs up to the point of, okay, so I, when I delivered Griffin, I was 40 weeks and I was past his due date by three days. Okay, sorry about that. I changed his diaper and then he wanted to eat and, you know, mom life. Um, when I had Griffin, I was three days overdue. So when I went to the hospital, I was it was on a Saturday. I went in to get induced um, because I was already overdue. My doctor didn't want me to go too far overdue. Um, and I he wanted to make sure I got in when he was working, you know, so that I didn't have a different doctor because I really wanted my doctor. I went in two days after my due date, which was on a Saturday, and I had a Foley put in, which is called a Foley bowl. <laughs> So, um, I went in on a Saturday and got this Foley bowl put in and what it is, is it like, they put it in and then they blow it up and it just dilates your cervix. So when I went in on, I went on a Wednesday to the doctor and they checked me one more time before I was already scheduled to go in Saturday and I was a tight one centimeter, which was progress from nothing. Um, but obviously not enough. They still wanted me to come in and do the Foley bulb and all that. So I went in and when they checked me before they had put the Foley bulb in, I was at a full one centimeter and I was 50% effaced. So that had changed in like three days, um, which was awesome. That meant I was my body was actually working pretty quickly. Um, so they went ahead and put the Foley in and they what they do is they leave it in overnight and um, after, you know, it's supposed to dilate you to about four centimeters and then it'll fall out after you dilate it because you know your cervix it opens it up and then that bulb falls out and because you're dilated. So they put it in and it was about 10, it was about 11 o'clock at night I think when they put it in. It felt like cramps at the beginning, just like your menstrual cramps. And it was like, man, I, I hadn't had a period in nine months obviously. And so um, I was like, man, I forgot how much these things hurt. <laughs> It bothered me, and um, they could give you pain medication, but I was like, uh, because I didn't want anything to slow down my dilating, and so I just wanted to, I was like fighting through every pain I was having, and it would come like contractions where it would hurt, and then it would stop, and I could lay on my side, and the, they would come in, and they came in and gave me Ambien to help me sleep that night, because they were like, you're going to need sleep, so you have energy to push a baby out tomorrow, you know. I did not sleep good at all I and mean, I was in pain. I fought the ambience and then it went, it actually wasn't really working and it was just kind of a nightmare and um, I was in so much pain. I kept getting up to go to the bathroom because when I would walk, it kind of felt better to just to walk around for a second, um, at least from the bed to the bathroom. When I got up at, I don't remember what time it was, maybe like two in the morning or something. I'm not sure. I went to the bathroom and when I, sat down on the toilet, the, the bulb fell out. And I was like, okay. I was in so much pain at that point. I was having like actual contractions pretty frequently. I paged the nurse and I told her I wanted pain medication. I was hurting, so I don't know what she gave me, but I think it helped me sleep pretty good until the morning came. My mom got there at six in the morning. My dad stayed the night with me at the hospital. My mom got there at six in the morning. I don't really remember much between all then. My mom said when she got there that I was like talking about how I don't even know what I was talking about, but I was, I don't even remember that. So my doctor got there, I think at eight in the morning, seven, no, it was probably about seven in the morning. He came in and he broke my water. And you know, as soon as they break your water, that's when you start having more intense contractions 
closer together. So when he broke my water, I think I was at four and a half, five centimeters. I was stuck at four or five centimeters for a little while. He broke my water, I started having intense contractions every two to three minutes. And I was told by so many people, try not to get the epidural until you're like six or seven centimeters so that you can ensure you'll get to 10 without it slowing down and taking longer. And I told my doctor, I was like, I don't wanna get the uh, epidural yet because I know it'll slow my contractions down or slow my dilating down. And he was like, no, you will be fine. Cause I was at a five, I think I was at a full five. And so after I said, I said, okay, well I'm gonna wait just a little bit longer. And they said, and I started having a really bad one and I was in so much pain. I mean like I could not come to grips with the pain. Like I was doing everything. They had me turn around in the chair. They had me do all this different positions and I mean, it was not working. And I was just like hurting so bad. I said, they said, well, it's going to take a minute for that. It's going to take a minute for the esthetician to get up here or the esthetician, the anesthesiologist to get up here anyways. And so I was like, okay, we'll go ahead and just call him up. Just call him up. I can't do this. He got up there, he gave me the epidural. Life was so good after the epidural. They say it, but you don't realize it until you're in that so you're in that pain and you're just like, oh my gosh, like I can't do this. Ugh. And Andy on Skype, um, he was on Skype with me for five hours. It was amazing. If y'all saw my labor and delivery actual vlog, um, what you saw is my computer and then you saw my phone, like on on audio, FaceTime audio it said, and it would be sitting on top of my computer. Well, his computer, the computer worked, but the, the, the speakers didn't. So I called him on FaceTime audio and put it on speaker, and then he was on his phone on the audio, and then we were on Skype on the computer. So that's why it was two different things. He, he was seeing me and hearing me through two different de t devices. So he, he was able to have a computer, um, get into a private room and he stayed with me the whole time and I don't think I could have done it as well without him honestly like I hope I don't get emotional it's kind of making me water just thinking about it but honestly seriously that was the best thing that happened because he was there like he FaceTimed me and the first uh, the moment he FaceTimed me it was when they were breaking my water and from that moment on he was with me the whole time and to the point when he was born he stayed with me the whole time you know like everything it was just it was amazing I honestly like I'm just so thankful for that because I didn't have to worry about grab my phone and tell him what was going on he was right there he heard everything the doctor said he saw everything I mean it was just it was wonderful and uh, it just makes me so happy that that was able to be the case more than anything do I wish he would have been right there beside me physically but having him there, you know, um, it was it was empowering for me emotionally to be able to just like turn and see him right there, you know? The epidural was amazing. It hurt really bad, honestly. For me, it did. Maybe I was just in so much pain. Plus, it took them a long time to do it because I kept having contractions. And every time I had a contraction, they had to let me ride it out before they could continue. So I was like... <gasps> Oh my god, stop. They were so awesome. I mean, just like very involving. Like, are you ready? You know, like just and talk to him like he was there. It wasn't just like a computer. It was like he was, they included him like he was physically there. She was about to go on lunch or something, but she was going to check me one more time. Andy was like literally going to take a nap because he was so tired. Like he had been up for so long and he was about to, I was like, he was literally about to take a nap. She was like going to check me one more time, like see how far I dilated and everything. And because they don't check that often. She looked back at me and she was like, you're nine centimeters. And I was like, what? Because y'all know that I was like so paranoid. I was going to have to have a C-section. And I mean, just hearing I was nine centimeters, I knew I wasn't going to, everything just went so great. Like I was, I was ready, you know, like that was it. She was like, okay. And I, so I said, okay, how long is it going to be? And she said like an hour. I brought, I didn't even have a plan for Skylie at the time, but at that, but my stepdad was actually on his way to get hit her anyways. And, um, I was like, I want her here so bad. Like, I, I just, something hit me, and I was like, man, I wish Skylie was here. Like, I want her so bad. Andy was right there. Everything was perfect with Andy, the communication. I was like, we need Skylie here now. I'm so glad she got there. She got there right before I was literally about to start pushing. I'm so happy I had that moment with her where it was Andy on the computer. He was able to talk to her. I was sitting there 
she came in and I was able to be like, okay, baby, like, I'm about to bring your brother out. And then like she left and came back in and there he was. So it was more easy to wrap her mind around. I think that, you know, I was like, okay, he's about to come out of my tummy. And then the next thing she saw me, he was out of my tummy. So it was easy to put it together for her. And she understood that. And she's never once, you know, questioned like, where's the baby in your belly? Like she totally gets it. And it's great. Um, I only pushed for 30 minutes, which is crazy. I know people are like, seriously? And I'm like, yeah, like I did that. <laughs> The pushing was crazy. Like, I expected it to be more intense than it was. It was frustrating and hard because you're pushing, but you don't feel anything. All you feel is pressure. You don't feel pain. So you feel the pressure of something coming, but you, you know, like you can't feel it. So at the beginning when I couldn't tell if anything was happening or not, so I was like, am I even doing anything? And they're like, you're doing so good. And I could tell by looking back on the video, I was straining. I mean, my eyes were red and, you know, everything. Would, I could tell that I'd been doing stuff. But in the moment, I didn't feel like I was doing a damn thing, you know. <laughs> and at the last few pushes, I could really feel the pressure. And that's when I told my doctor. That's why I was on the in the video. You heard me. I was like, can I do it again? Can I push one more? You know, because sometimes I've seen on TV and movies where they're like, don't push again yet because it could cause damage. You know, like they need to get the baby right or something. So I was like, can I push again? And they were like, yeah. And I did that like two more times and the baby, and he was out. And I mean, to feel him, like to actually feel him come out, you could feel the pressure release. And it was like so liberating. And I just looked and I saw him. And I mean, I didn't think I was going to cry because I just didn't. I don't know. I just didn't think I was going to cry. And I just lost it. It was so overwhelming. I was just like. I felt so, it was, it's just the craziest feeling. I can't even explain it. I don't know. And to be able to see Andy right there and see him see what I saw, you know, like we finally experienced a moment together. You know how long it's been since Andy and I have like experienced anything together because he's not here. So for us to actually, whew, no tears, for us to actually have that experience together was unreal, just unreal. And after it was all over, I felt like Superwoman. I was like, I can't believe I just did that. You know, like, I can't believe I did that. I, I just felt so strong, and I just felt like a rock. I don't know. I can't explain it. I just feel, I felt so good. I still feel good. Every day I'm like, I, I can't believe, like, I brought you into this world. And to, like, the, not only that, but, like, I've had the best experience breastfeeding. He latched on immediately like as soon as they we attempted to do it he latched on like that he's got a great latch he it's just been wonderful it's also really cool feeling like I can actually keep life you know like I gave him life and now I can keep him alive solely off of my body I'm getting a new phone tonight I'm so excited okay I got a few questions so I hope y'all can hear this I'm gonna Okay, so my question is, was having Griffin more painful or less painful than you expected? Was having Griffin more painful or less painful than I expected? Um, it was less painful. Like I said, the pushing part was less painful. The contractions are a... Hi, Lauren. Um, I just want to say I love you, and I'm really <laughs> happy for you. Um, Thank you. Did Andy stay up all night waiting for Griffin to arrive? Okay, um, did Andy stay up all night? So he is 10 hours ahead of us. So when I was getting, when the night, okay, basically kind of, but not really. Um, he stayed up really late though, because when I was, when I, when they gave me the Ambien, he had like just woke up. So that was at like midnight. So it was like what, 10 o'clock there in the morning. So he woke up at 10 and then he woke up probably at like actually like nine um and then he was up until it was like three o'clock here so one o'clock first of all i just want to say congratulations to you amy and skyly he's absolutely beautiful i just wanted to know who was in the room with you when you um gave birth to him love you this is so fun i have never done a snapchat q a and it's so fun seeing you guys <laughs> So in the room was my sister, my dad, and my mom. So it's not a video, but okay. What was your first reaction? What was my first reaction? It was like, oh my God, did I just do that? Literally, I was just like, oh my God, I just did that. And then my, sec my second, these were all like millisecond reactions. I was like, he looks so much like Skyly. 
and like oh my god his hair is so blonde and um oh my gosh like just you know they put him on my chest immediately i know y'all didn't see that but as soon as they pulled him out they set him right on my chest and i was just like oh my god <laughs> oh my god <laughs> was it hard not having skylie there and how did skylie react to griffin um, Skylie, if you saw her, like, I had my first reaction right there on video. She was like, Griffin. And I was like, yeah. Like, it almost brought tears to my eyes because she was just so like, oh, my God, he's right here. You know, and it was so sweet. And I think she was just kind of like, whoa, at first, like, it was hard to wrap her mind around. You know, as a two-and-a-half-year-old, I remember being five or six when my sister was born, and it was hard for me to wrap my mind around, you know. Griffin is so cute, but... My question is, what was it like to see him for the first time? It was pretty liberating. I mean, you you carry this baby in you for nine months, and you feel him, and you love him, but you have no clue what he looks like, you know? And um, so that was really freaking cool. Like, the coolest thing ever. That's my baby, you know? Sorry, it got kind of dark. My mom came home, and I had to help her with some stuff, so I had to pause for a second. So let's finish up y'all's questions. Hi Lauren, congratulations on Griffin. He's so cute. Uh, I was just wondering what pain you experienced during labor. Thanks, love you. Um, so the pain I experienced during labor, obviously my worst pain was obviously after they burnt my water, but it wasn't for very long. But my my most pain was probably during the night when. Um, oh baby. My worst pain was probably during the night when I was dilating and um, having my early contractions. They were actually really painful. I remember trying to ride it out as long as I could. And I would wake up like every five minutes, like just like, has it been an hour? Because I kept trying to wait until like the next hour before I would, you know, think about calling for pain meds. Hi Lauren, I'm Amy. I'm just wondering how Skylie's adapting to having Griffin around. Love your videos. Aw, you're so pretty. Skylie is doing really good. Um, at the first couple days, she would, you could tell she was acting out just a little bit because she would do things that were out of her character um, just to kind of almost get my attention. She tells me she loves me all the time. And um, she, she we have this thing where I'm like, who are all my babies? And she'll say, Boo-Boo and Griffin and me, we're all your babies, you know, and she says that all the time, almost like, remember, I'm your baby too, you know, just because he's so needy, like he's literally always in my lap, you know, so every time I get a second, I'll put Griffin in the swing, um, whenever Skylar's here, or I'll let my mom hold Griffin, and um, I'll just go and, you know, sit, I'll be like, Skylar, you know, we'll get, we'll lay on the bed and watch TV, or I'll just give her as much of my attention, because it is hard, you know giving two kids your attention, especially when you're the only parent around at the moment. Hey Lauren, I was just wanting to know how Skylie was taking being an older sister now to Griffin and how Blue's taking it. Is he jealous or missing you any? <laughs> um, he's so cute. Oh, thanks. And well, I just actually just answered that about Skylie, but with Blue, he's kind of distanced himself from me. Hey, Bubba. What, Bubba? What? He's kind of distanced himself from me just a little bit. Um, my mom's been here and he's like attached to her. Uh, he sleeps with me though, but he's, he's like attached to my mom whenever she leaves. He kind of whines a bit. Um, but he's been, he's actually been really good. I let him sniff Griffin out. I let him do his thing. You know, I didn't, I haven't scolded him or anything. Um, but he's, he's actually been really good. He's actually been a lot calmer since Griffin's been here. Hey Lauren, I was just wondering how bad was the pain during birth and how did you manage to deal with the pain? Love you guys. <laughs> Thanks. It wasn't, it was worth it. It was like a weird pain. It wasn't like a pain where you're like, stop, stop, I can't do it anymore. Yeah. Like getting a tattoo or something, you know? Um, I'm there, baby. I know, I know, I know. We're almost done, baby. It was like one of those things where you're like, I gotta get through it. You know, you just, you're thinking about the outcome. You're just like, I gotta get through the pain. Because there's nothing you can do, you know? That's what I kept telling myself, you know, like, Oh my God, we're just, we're getting there, we're getting there. I had Andy right there. That was really, he didn't even have to say anything, you know. I just felt better knowing he was right there, a part of the whole thing. Um, so just having the, the ones you love around you, that will psh, get you through. Hey Lauren, so how was your pain level wise? I've had three, so. And what does Andy think? Thanks, love. And Andy, he, he's just so ready to hold him, you know. Um, I've really felt for him, for Andy a lot because 
I can only, you know, I, I was like, you know, all we wanted so badly was for him to be able to see the birth, and he did. But then at the same time, it was like you got to see it, but you couldn't, you couldn't touch it, you know, like it was right there, and it was like a glass window, and it's like you couldn't touch it, you know. And I can't imagine how that had to feel. He's really strong. He's he's probably the strongest man I know, and um, and so yeah, you know, God bless me with him, but. He's so excited and then ready to get home and hold him, and we're just we're we're getting close. Hi, Lauren. I was just curious, how long did you push for until Griffin was born? He's so adorable. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. I love seeing you guys. This is so fun. I'm gonna do like a Snapchat Q and A, like okay. across the board, whatever you wanna ask, um, and sometime soon. But it's so fun seeing y'all. I pushed for 30 minutes, like I said. 30 minutes! And he was in my arms! <laughs> okay, the last question isn't a video, it's like a picture. Let's see what is it is. Oh, he is so precious. Are you going to go, are you going to feature him in a video? He's gonna be in my vlogs, you know, it's my baby. <laughs> he's gonna be in all my videos because he's a part of my life now, aren't you, Bubba? You are, you are my whole world. And I love you so much. He's getting hungry, so I'm going to feed him now. But um, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that this helped you all or just gave you kind of an insight into, you know, this experience. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for everything and all your questions that people sent me on Snapchat. Thank you for playing with me. And um, if you have any more questions or anything, just leave them down below, and I will try to answer as many as I can. I love you all. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe, and I will see you in my next one. Bye. Say bye bye. Can you say bye-bye? Can you say bye-bye? <gasps> say bye-bye.